ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by, leave us a comment, leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Welcome, Angry Fable. Today on Psychos and Sociopaths, we're going to talk about Alvaro de Sabo. Alvaro de Sabo is also known as the Boston Strangler. Now, there's a series on uh, Hulu where they're talking about this, but Alvaro de Sabo was indefinitely the Boston Strangler. Uh, we'll talk about his early life right now. DeSavo was born in Chelsea, Massachusetts to Frank uh, Charlotte DeSavo. His father was a violent alcoholic who at one point knocked out his mother's teeth and bent her fingers back until they would break in front of their children. He would also bring home prostitutes and engage sexual acts with them in front of his wife and ch young children. The young DeSavo began torturing animals as a child and started shoplifting and stealing in an early adolescence, frequently crossing paths with the law. In November 1943, at age 12, DeSavo was the first arrested for battery and robbery. In December of the same year, he was sent uh, to Lehman School for Boys. In October 1944, he was paroled and started working as a delivery board. In August 1964, he returned to Lehman School of, uh, for stealing an automobile. After completing his sentence, uh, second sentence, DeFa uh, De uh, DeSalvo joined the U.S. Army. He was honorably just of, uh after his first tour of duty. He re-enlisted, and in spite of being tired, uh, tried to a, a court-martial. DeSalvo uh, was again honorably discharged. DeSalvo served as a military police sergeant in the 2nd Squadron and 14th Armory Cavalry uh, Regime. Pictures of DeSalvo being arrested on February 25th, 1967, showed him in a U.S. Naval dress blue uniform with petty officer third class insignia on his sleeves. At the time of the Boston Strangler murders, DeSalvo lived at 11 Florence South Park in Mad uh, Madden, Massachusetts, uh, across the street from the judges, uh, jurisdiction of Florence and Clement Street. Now, these crime spans... Uh, Spanned over June 14th, 1962 to January 4th, 1964. And no one really knew how he got in to the, uh, from what the documentary said. They did, I guess they didn't do full research, which I did. And I got a lot of information on here. But, uh, they were setting up, they, they, they literally showed like photos of that time frame. Because the whole city was scared in Boston that uh, they were setting up like glass bottles in front of the door or they put stuff in front of the door because they didn't know how at the time how he was getting in. But let's go on to the rest of the research uh, between June, uh, June 14th, 1962 and January 4th, 1964, 13 women between the ages of 19 and 85 were murdered in the Boston area. They were eventually tied to the Boston Strangler. Most of the women were sexually assaulted in their apartment and then strangled with articles of cloning. One victim, an elderly woman, died of a heart attack. Two others uh, were stabbed to death, one of them uh, of whom was badly beaten uh, without signs of forced entry into the dwelling. Women assumed uh, to have either known the killer or voluntarily allowed him into their homes. In the fall of 1964, uh, in addition to the strangle murders, the police were actually uh, trying to solve a series of rapes committed by a man who had been dubbed 
the measuring man or the green man. On October 27th, 1964, a stranger entered a young woman's home in East Cambridge posing as a detective. He tied his victim to the bed, posted, uh, proceeded to sexually assault her, suddenly left saying, I'm sorry, as he went. The woman's description led the police to identify the assailant as a Savo. When his photo was published, many women identified him as the man who assaulted them. Early in October 27th, the Savo had posed as a murderous uh, molder, motorist with car trouble and attempted to enter a home in uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Sorry. Uh, the owner of the home, future Brockton Police Chief uh, Robert Spro uh, Sproutis. Let's all hear the... Sprouls. Sprouls. Speaking spay voice, uh, became suspicious and normally fired a shotgun at some uh, DeSavo. Under arrest for his roles as a green man rapes, DeSavo was not suspected of being involved in the murders. Only after he was charged with rape did he give the detailed confession of his activities as the Boston Strangler, both of under hypnosis. Weird. Okay, I don't, I don't see how that's be. A missile and evidence, but back then they probably did. Uh, induced by William Joseph Bryan and also without hypnosis during interviews with uh, Assistant Attorney General John Bolton and Multimy. Initially confessed to fellow inmate George Nasser, who then identified his attorney, F. Lee Bailey. Bailey took uh, Saval, uh, DeSablo's case. Though there were some inconsistencies, DeSavo was able to uh, to cite details that had not been made public. However, there were no physical evidence to sustain his confession. As such, he strolled, uh, he stood trial for earlier and unrelated crimes of rob uh, robbery and sexual assault. Bailey brought up uh, the confession to the murders as part of his client's history at the trial as part of a initial defense, insanity defense. God damn, sorry. But it was ruled inadmissible by the judge. For his 1967 trial, DeSavo's mental state had a, was evaluated by Dr. Henry Colts, a neurologist who had established the first sex offender treatment center in Massachusetts. Bailey engaged a plea bargain to lock in, uh, lock in his client's guilt in exchange for taking the death penalty off the table as, and also to preserve the possibility of eventually insanity verdict. Bailey was uh, angered by the jury's decision to put DeSavo in prison for life. My goal was to see the strangler wind up in a hospital where doctors could try, uh, try to find out what made him kill. Society is deprived of the study that might help uh, de uh, deter others, mass uh, killers, who lived among us, wanting to, uh, waiting for the trigger to uh, set them off. Well, that that's actually quite noble in his uh, defense. I mean, there's a lot of case studies, and uh, uh, me and Andrea talked about this last week. Uh, during our research, uh, she coined the uh, that I end up doing the research was the trifecta: the bedwetting, the uh, trauma at home, and the killing of the animals. Uh, this guy did too, uh, killing of animals and uh, a very disrupt home life. Uh, but a uh, lot of a lot of people still don't understand uh killers at large i mean there there's some people out there that's had traumatic uh, home life i mean there there's a guy that's a navy seal slash uh doctor slash astronaut that he literally i think he 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 saw his mother killed right in front of him from his uh uh, from his dad and uh, that kind of trauma. I mean, 
a lot of people when they when he went through buds were like oh he's not gonna make it he's not gonna make it and he made it and then they found out what happened to him and they were like oh yeah uh that's what's really sad and i'm just giving you a little bit of information on our uh, most of the people that are in tier one are either a they've not really they lived a harsh life or b a good percentage i'm not saying their cycles were ready to flip the switch and start killing everybody and there's a lot of people that are in like tier one groups that are really nice every one of i uh every one of them that i've met that was either like ranger green beret navy seal uh what's the other ones uh what's the other one uh para rescue oh, they're, they're really nice people uh JTAC. I've never met anybody that's uh, as it sets as right now. Never met anybody that was been. Uh, I haven't met a Night Stalker. They're pretty hardcore too. But th those types of people, uh, even even uh, people that run run the boats down the rivers with the uh, and uh, mini guns. I met met them. They're the nicest people I ever met. Well, anyways. De Sava was sentenced to life in prison in 1967. In February of that year, he escaped with two fellow inmates in the Bridgewell State Hospital, triggered by uh, triggering a full-scale manhunt. A uh, note was found in his bunk addressed in the, to the superintendent. In it, De Sava stated he had escaped to focus uh, to focus attention on the condition of the hospital and his uh, on, and his own situation. Three days after his escape. He uh, he called his lawyer and turned himself in. His lawyer then sent uh, the police to rearrest him in Lynn, Massachusetts. Following the escape, he was transfer uh, transferred to a Mexico security prison uh, known at, at the time as Walpole, where he later uh, recorded his Strangler confessions. On November 25th, 1960, uh, 1973, he was st found stabbed to death uh, in the prison infirmary. Robert Wilson, who associated with the uh, Winter Hill Gang, was tried for DeSalvo's uh, murder. And the Winter Hill Gang was uh, uh, Whitey Boyle's gang, I think. Hold on real quick. I'm pretty sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Whitey Boyle was part of that gang. Anyways. Uh... But the trial ended in a uh, in a hang, hung jury. So basically, they a hung jury is a deadlock jury, and it is a judicial uh, jury that cannot uh, agree upon a verdict after extending deliberation and is unable to re react. Be required un an enemy or supermajority. Hung juries usually result in the case being tried again. Yeah. I always thought that the hung jury was a jury that knew equivalently that the person did it. Yes, I'm wrong, and I need to read more. Uh, Bailey later claimed that DeSavo was killed for selling amphetamines uh, in the prison for less than the inmate enforced uh, sanction price. So, <laughs> uh. Sorry, I ended up. I know I shouldn't laugh at that, but I have watched a TikTok earlier last week where they're talking about the selling of uh, cigarettes, and he probably was. He's probably uh, saying that you didn't have to do two blowjobs; you only had to do one to get the amphetamines. Yeah, I'm a sick son of a bitch. Disciples' papers uh, are housed in. Lloyd Sandling Library Special Collection at John Jay College for Criminal Justice in New York City. His papers included uh, his correspondence mainly with the members of the Bailey family and gifts sent to Baileys of jewelry, leatherwork crafted by DeSalvo while in prison. And yes, they, they actually uh, 
the prison I was at, uh, the all red unit here in Wichita Falls, uh, which is an aisle. The, it's strange they call it the Wichita Falls prison, but it's an aisle park. But uh, there's a, they, they make a lot of good work. Uh, they make belts. You could come in with like a picture of like a $500 belt and they'll make it in house for like probably 100 bucks, maybe 50. I mean, you can get like, I mean, it's kind of legal what they're doing because it's copyrighted stuff but they they'll make i've seen like um, they make uh saddles boots uh cowboy hats uh that was and then this was the first time i seeing it or heard, hearing about it and then i actually started seeing it around the world was uh wood burning uh artwork which they the, when you don't have anything to do for the rest of your life, here you can you can become a really good artist. There's a lot of good artists. Uh, one of the best tattooists I, I have ever seen. His artwork was really good, and he he was a tattooist. So I always found like his. Anytime I was like, "Hey, dude, just just I need I mean I need to look like somewhat good worker." So you got an extra tattoo gun that you're not using anymore. I can put it in the bag. That's going to get me caught. I was like, just say it's in the common area. Okay. So <laughs> end up having like in the common area. It's like, hey, I found this tattoo gun in the common area. Oh, good job. Yay. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so weird how correctional officers, and, and mind you, there's a lot of correctional officers that do this and a lot of, a lot of the inmates, if they respect you, they'll they're like, we'll help you out with a good job. And a lot of officers, oh, you don't do that because the, they think that the, they control you now. And after a while, it was like, hey, boss. I mean, the, 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 I was like, I got to send this soup over there. So and to, to pay my, uh, my debt. And I was like, how big's your debt? He's like, what's this big? I was like, all right. As long as I don't see it, man. Oh, uh, not gonna lie. It's it's one of those. It, being a correctional officer is a, a. We wore gray, and we run in a gray area. There's no black and white. Uh, as long as it's, I, 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 the only problems I had, and I told them right off the bat, I was like, no drugs, no. I mean, if it's food products and everything, don't do drugs or anything that if it comes back at me, or a no. I will bring the law down as much as possible. And since it's been about 10 years, I can say that as long as I didn't murder anybody. You know, it's sad, but sometimes you have to walk that fine line. Uh, Now, there was con uh, controversy that he did not kill anybody, uh, but on July 11th, 2013, Boston law enforcement officials announced in DNA evidence had linked DeSavo to rape and murder of a 19-year-old Mary Sullivan. Sullivan remain, uh, remains were exhumed, and the stuff from District Attorney Darrow F. Conley had se uh, has said uh, expected uh, investigators to find an exact match when the evidence was compared to his DNA. Now, they did compare it to his uh, nephew's DNA. Sorry, nephew's DNA. Uh, that was 99.9% uh, the same. So uh, DeSavo, Albert DeSavo, was the Boston Strangler. So all, all those murders that he did do. Uh, now, at the time, there were doubts. Uh, but with the uh, – his uh, – which uh, there's an interview with him with the uh, inmate th that he shared a bunk with. Uh, he confessed to his in, uh, to his uh, inmate uh, helper or uh, Sally. We'll call him Sally. Uh, confession to all the murders and everything. So there was no doubt that Albert committed a mo uh, moment. Uh, Jordan Nasser. Uh, was the, his name. Then it made uh, DeSalvo reported confessed to 
is among the suspects in the case. He is currently serving life imprisonment in a 1967 shooting, which he says that he didn't do. Uh, in 2008 and again in 2009, the Massachusetts Supreme Court system denied Nasser's appeal for his 1960 uh, conviction. In 1960, uh, 2006, Nasser argued in court filing that he had been unable to make his case in a previous appeal because he was in uh, federal prison in Leavenworth, Kansas uh, in the 1980s and therefore did not have access to Massachusetts legal resources. Courts noted that Nazareth had returned to Massachusetts in 1983, yet he did not plead his case for more than two decades. Nazareth, Nazar, ah, sorry, uh, was also filed a motion for a new trial in Essex County, which he was denied as he uh, was his 2011 pension. He actually ended up dying of uh, cancer. So, but all this in 1921. What the fuck? Okay, here... Now, I'm getting over on... This is just... I'm, I'm reading this article and everything, and this... Let me... Let me reread re re this. Oh, it was... Okay. Okay, okay. <sighs> Politician do, uh, does jokes. There, there's another thing that... Uh, I'll get into it. There's two two things that... This this has happened before. I'll, I'll give you the second one afterwards. In 1971, the Texas legislature unanimously passed a resolution honoring DeSalvo for his work in population control. After the vote... Waco Representative Tom Moore Jr. admitted that he uh, had submitted the legislation as a April Fool's joke against his colleagues. His declared initiative was to prove that they passed legislation with no due diligence, giving the uh, to researching the issue beforehand. Having made his point, he withdrew his resolution. This happened twice in Texas. Uh, in Texas, the first time was because of DeSavo. The other time was Timmy Mimefe. Timmy Mimefe, if you actually know, he was the uh, uh, Unabomber. And it's 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 literally happened twice. And they passed legislation with no cause. Everybody says yes on stuff. And they're, they put in stuff like this. is like unanimously passed honoring so-and-so. And this time they honored the Savo. Uh, Albert DeSavo for population control, which technically he was not wrong. He was wrong for what he did, but he got his point across and he withdrew it. Uh, same thing happened with Timothy McVeigh. Anyways, <laughs> God damn, I love Texas. <laughs> uh, weaker assholes at times. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you all for listening. I, that 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 last bit got me good. Is that right? Uh, I cause I, I just look at the murder stuff and everything, and I don't really go down because it's just most of the stuff is like, oh, they're doing a Hulu movie, like they are now. They're doing Boss of Strickland on Hulu, and a lot of the times it's just stuff that you just it, it it's it's nothing to do with the case. Sometimes it's just people putting other stuff but that was actually pretty funny and it, it it's happened a couple of times in a lot of people's uh they they, they trying to honor somebody it's like y'all assholes don't really know what's going on and they prove it <laughs> and that's how they prove it <laughs> anyways everybody thank you all for listening thank you all for watching uh yeah five stars thumbs up like whatever you get our stuff from uh I'm going to get some more guests. Ah, BC. If you're listening, BC, you need to uh, you need to make sure you're open next week. Because we're supposed to, we were, <laughs> me, him, and Andre were supposed to talk about the whole uh, mur uh, murder, uh, murderers with their significant others. 
And what's really sad is, is I uh, even after I did the research, we would have probably been there for like two hours if if um, we only set it up for an hour. We would probably been there for like two hours, maybe three hours, because there's so because even even I ended up going back and re researching some of the stuff, and there I've I've found uh, a couple of them that end up getting like notes and everything from other people. But I we did a good job. But you know, good artists don't like to uh, like to make perfection, not leave everything up to grabs. But anyways, thank you all for listening. Hope you all enjoy. Love you guys. <laughs>